Oh, sorry, you get the sign away. Oh, well, I'm ready to go. You know, I think everyone's excited, you know, just to transition from all the practice and camp stuff into an actual game setting. Have you thought much about being a senior and kind of this starting a year off strong? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it kind of hit me, you know, earlier. It's just like it's crazy that it's my last last year here. Time really does fly. Um, seems like just yesterday I was coming in as a freshman just trying to understand what's happening and all that stuff but you know it's been really fun and like you said you know it's my senior year so I really just want to make the most of it and do whatever I can for this team and help maximize our potential. We talked about it a couple times this summer and also over Big 12 Media Day about your connection with uh, with Skyler. Mm -hmm. where, where is that at coming out of fall camp? Oh it's good you know yeah I mean like you guys have kind of hit on before me and Skyler I feel like I've always just had a really good connection just I mean he came in a year after me but we were on a scout team together and kind of came up at the same time together. Um, and so then it's just been really good, you know, getting to learn this whole offense, this whole system with him. Um, you know, his leadership throughout this whole process has been really good. And then just, you know, me and him talking about things we like uh, and the game plan, stuff like that, watching film together, breaking down uh, opponent film, stuff like that has been good for helping to build our relationship, stuff like that. How different do you feel the passing game will look <clears throat> on Saturday compared to what we've grown accustomed to over the years? Yeah, um, I mean, I think it's – a little bit different style of offense, you know, we're going to try to be really efficient in the passing game and then take shots downfield. Um, I think we have more play action stuff than we did in the past. Um, obviously, we're under center a lot more, so that kind of changes some stuff as well. But, you know, I'm excited to see how it's going to look in the game. At what point did you feel comfortable to where you thought you weren't thinking anymore and just, and just playing within the offense? Um, I mean, I think we were reaching that point in the spring, uh, but definitely all through summer, you know, tightening stuff up and all that stuff and then basically reinstalling everything at fall camp it was just like the whole second time we installed it was like wow okay I got all this down like and that helps build your confidence and know you know what you're doing who else the receivers impressed you during during camp I think honestly the, the whole room has been really really cool to see just because there's been so many guys that have been impressive um obviously Malik Knowles has done a great job stepping up big Joaquin Gill's been doing good stuff all through spring all camp um Landry Weber had a really good camp um and you know Chabash and Taylor's right there in the mix too so we got a lot of guys obviously Joshua Youngblood's the young guy everyone keeps talking about so I mean we got a lot of guys who I think can go so I'm excited to see how it's going to look in a game with the rotation and stuff like that and see what people do what are your impressions of Chris Heron and the time he spent playing receiver I think he's done a great job with, like you said, the time he's played because he hasn't played a lot. You know, he uh, started in camp playing while he was still in the quarterback's room um, and eventually now has been meeting with us some too. So he hasn't had a lot of, you know, time to work on it, instructions like that, but he's got a lot of natural ability. A lot of stuff you can just say, hey, go run this route and see what happens and he can go make some good plays because he's a great athlete. We've seen you run different routes in a lot of games in your, in your career. Mm -hmm. At what point, where are you most dangerous? Ooh. Um, I would say when I can identify, you know, for at least a, with a good idea what the defense is going to do um, and then know what I'm going to do and know that Sky knows what I'm going to do. That's when I'm my, at my best. So honestly, just where I feel comfortable and prepared well. Um, you know, I like to move around, slot, outside. Um, I like to be in both spots. But just when I can, you know, pre-snap, identify what the defense is going to do and then have faith that the quarterback also sees it and I can play that play with a lot of confidence and a lot of speed just knowing that we know what's going on. Walter Neal praised you yesterday as the receiver who kind of got him the most in this camp as far as beating him. On the flip side, what corner gave you the toughest time or what corners played well in camp this year against you? Um, I would say definitely both Walt and AJ. Um, I love going against those guys just because, I mean, they're kind of the same situation, kind of came up with them. Um, so we've been going at each other for a long time now, and uh, we love to talk smack to each other. Um, and I know I'm going to get him someplace. He's going to get me someplace uh, with both of those guys. So it's been a lot of fun going against both those guys all camp. You know, it's stuff like that that helps keep camp interesting, and keep it exciting when you can talk smack to each other and know that, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to leave the field friends, um, but you're making each other better out there. What kinds of things come to come to your mind now as you kind of process your senior year and going forward and the season and all that encompasses? Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's kind of hard to fathom because um, I'd mentioned to you guys, I think down in Dallas, like coming here, you know, I didn't really even expect to play like under a significant role. You know, I was hoping if I worked hard, I'd get on special teams, you know, and then to get to play my sophomore year was crazy. And it's like at that point, it felt like I had so much time left. But in a blink of an eye, my junior year was gone. Obviously, it didn't go like we wanted it to. So now it's like I really had to approach this off season with that intentionality and like every making every day count because you know I can't waste this like this year I know it's going to go quick and so like I've been saying I just don't want to have any regrets at the end of this. Given how close last year's opener was with South Dakota mm -hmm. is there a little urgency with the team to come out and 
get off to a little bit faster start this time. Yeah, definitely with how last year went, uh, the first game, also just with a lot of the staff coming from those FCS schools, we know these FCS schools aren't bad teams. You know, they're really good football teams, and we know we can't overlook them. I think last year a lot of us fell into the trap of, oh, we have Mississippi State week two. Um, we spent time in camp preparing for Mississippi State, which now it's like, okay, no, we do know we have Nickel State game one. We have to focus on that. We got to take this process one game at a time. And so I think we're definitely a lot more focused on week one this year. How motivated are you guys by trying to essentially prove anybody who doubted Chris Kleiman right that he is he is the guy that was right for this job? Yeah, I think very motivated because, yeah, a lot of people were doubters at first. I think even some players were doubters at first, but then we, we met Coach, and, you know, he showed us his passion for the game and for us, and I think that makes us want to go play for him just a little bit more, you know. When you have that motivation, you know that that coach truly cares about you, like as a person outside of football too, it's going to make you that much more motivated on game day to go do it for them. You said when you came here, you were kind of thinking about playing on special teams. Mm -hmm. You know, you thought maybe that might be your role. Your latest former walk-on from the state of Kansas to be named a team captain. How how does that blow your mind? <laughs> it's crazy, um, honestly, because it's, it's something I dreamed about, something I wanted to do, just to even be here, to be in the room. Um, so to go from that to you know being named captain was. Incredible, but you know, to be honest with you, I had a lot of good examples in front of me. You know, Trent Tankin was a guy I looked up to. He was the same way. He came here as a walk-on, was named team captain. Stan Weber, he was my big brother on the team. Kind of, when I got here, he was kind of someone who kind of sat me down and showed me the ropes, said, hey, if you want to be successful in this program, like do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, he was a captain. So, you know, it didn't take any more convincing than him just telling me that, that, okay, this is what I need to do if I want to get on the field on special teams, if I want to be a leader in this program. So. I think those two guys really helped show the way for me. You love to hear your thoughts on Nick Offs. We hear a lot about his film study and that stuff, but physically, like, what's he good at? What's he like as a quarterback as far as physical skills go? Yeah, I mean, I think you hit it right on the head with his film study and the fact that I think guys can trust him and guys uh, respect that, that, that he knows what he's doing. Um, you know, he can throw the ball well. We know he's got a little moxie, too, in the run game. Um, so when the play breaks down, you know, he's going to take off if he has to. So I think – it just comes back to the whole trust thing. Guys trust him that he's going to make the right decision with the ball um, and that he's going to put them in a position to be successful. What are the biggest challenges when it comes to being a leader? I think um, one of the big challenges that was, I think, hard for me at first is you have to know sometimes guys are going to disagree with you. Guys aren't going to like you. You know, that kind of hit home uh, in the winter and summer workouts when it's like guys either aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing or I know they can do more and I had to kind of call them out for it. You know, everyone wants to be liked, but sometimes you're going to have to tell them something they don't want to hear. So that can be tough um, to kind of be the bad guy in a sense, but it needs to be said. So it's tough to do that. I think our team, though, and our like leadership group uh, has done a good job of backing each other up because it's hard if you're trying to call people out or you're trying to hold people accountable and you're the only one doing it. But when we have the seven guys that we do, um, it really helps. Is the leadership, is the mood kind of different than this time a year ago? Yeah, I think uh, – Someone mentioned this to me last year. I mean, I think this year we have a lot more leaders. You know, last year we had a great leader in Dalton Reisner. But, you know, at the end of the day, he was one of the only ones stepping up and leading. Um, and so I think this year we have a lot more leaders, and that's really been helpful because, like I just said, it's hard to be the one guy stepping up and saying something. It's hard to be the one guy who's being vocal. But when you have a group of people who are doing it, you can kind of all build off each other and trust that you, they're going to pick you up if you're falling short and things like that. So is, is Nichols the only team you've prepared for? Yep. Haven't looked ahead to anybody else. No, we're pretty much focusing one game at a time, which, I mean, I, I like it that way. I always hated trying to prep for someone down the season because at the end of the day, you're probably not going to remember what you were prepping for anyway. It's kind of just a waste of time. So I'm glad we're just focusing week by week. we got to take care of business one game at a time. Have you found it more challenging, you know, to play really good FCS teams like South Dakota or FBS teams? I won't name names, but the ones who, you know, go in 1-10, 1-11. Mm -hmm. Which is a tougher challenge for you guys? Well, I definitely think the FCS teams are – it's more of a trap game in a sense, you know, because I, I believe the past couple of years at least the FCS teams we've played are honestly sometimes better than the lower-level FBS teams. So – but as a fan, everyone expects us to just go out there and kill the FCS teams when in reality these are top 10 FCS teams we're playing every year, and they're really good football teams. You know, they're – I think Nichols went 9-4 last year. They're a playoff team. they got a four-year starter at quarterback. So they're a good football team. So obviously, yeah, you can't overlook them, and they are better than F some FBS teams. So we just got to prepare like we need to, though.